Hey guys, Basil here with a quick camera video explaining exactly how the camera UI on the Sony Xperia Z5 Premium stacks up. Recapping the camera on the Z5 Premium's 23 megapixels, it's the same sensor as found on the Z5 and the Z5 Compact. How does it quickly does it fire up even when you've got that 4K display to contend with? How's performance generally? And of course, what are the modes like? I'm gonna start off by bringing something into frame. That's a lens. Now I'm gonna just press the camera button. See how quickly it fires up. It did so very quickly. Point it, shoot, took a picture nice and quickly too. I can jump in on that picture and there's a little bit of waiting, but you can zoom in and access that picture pretty nice and quickly. This is a relatively fresh install. I have customized a wallpaper. I have installed a load of applications, but I haven't logged into too many of them, only a few. Now let's talk about the actual camera UI and see how it kind of performs in practical environments. It's a shame we haven't got this out yet, um, but we will do and report more heavily on the camera. So first off, tapping, taking a picture um, of a written element. I'm gonna just focus directly in on that um, and instantly you can see that is pretty easy to read right there. Now let's see how that stacks up to the digital zoom because Sony's clear zoom tech, uh, have, which they've been touting, um, should perform really well when you zoom in like that. Now you could see I had a ver fair amount of handshake um, in there. Um, and a bit of that has come through. You can see there's some slight ghosting around that, but it's actually relatively respectable. Um, it would be interesting to see how that stacked up against that shot. Unfortunately, I can't go too crazy zooming in there. What I might be able to do is crop it down to that tiny little element so that we can get a slightly more representative view as to how the two stack up. So I will do that now for you. Crop down and tick. That looks about right, or at least it'll give me something to zoom into. And then I have that zoomed in element through digital zoom, which you can see has very different exposure to this. Um, and interestingly, yeah, the zoomed in element is a fair bit sharper. Um, that probably is heavily software based and comes down to processing, but still it goes to show that with the Sony Xperia Z5 and Z5 Premium, there is benefit to digital zooming over indeed retrospective cropping, if for exposure and nothing else. So that's one cool thing. In addition, you can customize a few more settings in Superior Auto than you used to be able to. You can customize brightness and color balance. In addition, you've also got flash control, which you've always had, but you can flip between front and rear facing camera. The front camera is a 5 megapixel snapper. If it's anything like the Z5, it doesn't perform quite as well as the iPhone 6S, for example, um, and would really benefit from a flash, especially in low light, but it's heaps better than the Z3. Zapping on the three dots right there, you can see you can also shoot in a variety of resolutions. In Superior Auto, you're better off shooting in eight megapixel 90% of the time. I found that a couple of occasions, uh, full resolution uh, was beneficial in, mac in manual mode, but um, you pretty safe leaving it at eight megapixels. You can also see self timer, um, smile shutter, preview, face recognition, all additional options. As far as movie goes, you've got steady shot, which is um, active. Um, I tend to flick that to standard just because I like my steady shot to be on when it comes to video. Um, and that's pretty much the extent of the options. And there are a few more right there. If I jump out of that, I can flip into manual mode. And anyone who knows Sony knows this isn't actually a real manual mode. It does give you some advanced options, but it's more akin to those found on a Sony compact camera, for example. You've got these kind of shooting modes, which are very, very similar to cyber shot devices. Um, some control over exposure compensation and white balance, as well as an HDR toggle. You've got flash options and again, those camera control options, um, and you've got resolution options. And it's very much what we've seen earlier with the addition of ISO right there for uh, sensor sensitivity, so you can control um, the brightness. And for anyone wondering, the ISO goes all the way up to 3200, which is impressive. Jumping in, you can see AR effects. Now, AR effects overlays uh, effects over your screen. So um, for example, I tap through on the dinosaur. This is all stuff that we've seen before. Um, I can, it's gonna give me an image and then I'll actually need to hover points over my uh, interface. Um, and it will, as you can see, generate a dinosaur. Use a gyroscope in order to let me navigate around. I can then record video 
or take a picture that I think captures at 720p resolution um, and it records video I think at 720p resolution too and then I have access to it right there. I can jump out of that, you can see there are third party ones that you can install as well. Jumping back into the camera and you can see you've got style portrait as well. Um, so this applies real time effects to a portrait so you're going to have to excuse the fact I'm currently in a studio. It gives you a warning that it might actually overheat so I'm going to accept that um, and I can apply some elements to my somewhat weathered tired face. So I can swipe to change the style. So, um, and I can apply elements to my face. So you can see it's trying to figure out where my lips are. Um, you should be able to see this. I'm failing pretty miserably. I think my beard's throwing it off. Suntan, oh yeah, could do with one of those. Mystery, sunshine. To be honest, this is exactly the kind of stuff that I would probably never use. Um, attempting to throw paint on my face um, and you can do other stuff as well, like change the framing, but yeah. Definitely not one that I'm going to practically use or recommend too heavily as a thing to buy the phone for. You've also got AR mask and this is even weirder. Um, again, uh, if I point the camera towards a face, it's going to prompt me at my overheat. I can actually overlay elements like a cat face over my face, like a lion face, a gorilla face, or I can even change ethnicity, um, which is random, very, very, very random and weird. So um, if you can't see that due to any reflection, what I can also do is I can take a picture or indeed a video um, and I am clearly not only a different race but a different gender as well um, and a very different age one would hope um, so yeah that definitely definitely is weird beyond all measure so jumping back into the camera modes um, and we can get out of the front facing stuff you've seen enough of my face and more to the point um, you uh, don't need to see anything else in portrait because it's clearly creating reflection central um, I can open up um, um, 4K video mode, we all know and we love, it has nothing really too out of the ordinary. One thing to note though, based on our comparisons, um, 4K video doesn't engage in steady shot, which is a digital image stabilization. You've also got creative effects, uh, which we've seen many times. Now, creative effects is a very, very polished way um, of uh, uh, adding some creative filters to your display and it's much much more um, engaging than a lot and customizable than a lot of others so for example you can use your fingers to customize this is a kaleidoscope um, setting customize exactly how um, everything looks so we can pull back and you can see zoom out we can generate a kaleidoscope image based on the lens right there you can also mm -mm -mm, jump in and um, uh, um, tab through on the creative filters to do things like have a partial color, comic, fisheye lens effect, etc. Um, so it's pretty cool and Sony's been doing this for a while um, but one thing that they've done is they've refined the experience so it's just gotten even better um, especially based on just how customizable it is. You have a range of old film filters for example it's just that bit uh, crisper and better than um, what other people tend to be doing. So jumping out of that you've also got a sticker creator which just lets you take a photo of something and turn it into a sticker you can overlay on other pictures. Sweet panorama which you know, time shift video which slows down an element of a video face in picture which we've seen multi-camera is very very cool this allows you to record with multiple sony devices multiple um, angles and it'll stitch the video together um, and incorporate it into one very very cool cross uh, kind of scene video that um, just looks relatively professional ed professionally edited if done correctly sound photo complete gimmick total ripoff of Samsung's one but to be honest I'm not too fussed because everyone's copying everyone these days ultimately though the ones that are really going to clinch it for you and the improvements to superior auto um, and manual um, and in addition the creative effects I use a fair bit the sweet panorama is also a lot of fun and obviously there is that 4k video if you are using that 4k video I'd massively recommend you use a tripod though we'll be doing a few more things we'll be doing a temperature test to see how hot the 4k video gets us just imagine 4k video with a 4k display where the 4k playback gets the device hot as well um, other tests you want us to do well let us know in the comments section below but this has been a quick look at the Sony 
Sony Xperia Z5 Premium's 23 megapixel rear facing camera. And of course the effects for both the front and the rear camera. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Make sure also you head over to btech.com. We've got some cool deals running at the moment with Nomo. Nomo make awesome bags and accessories. We've got 15% off perfect in time for the festive season. Thanks for watching.